Hey, hey, everybody, I am Blue, and welcome back to my let's play of Ash of God's Redemption. Now, last time, uh, we went back to our friend Hopper, uh, who came to this town of Albius, that we ex actually escaped with Thorn. Um, and he sees what's going on now, and I believe we were summoned by the, what was it, Archduke or Archbishop? Wait, I can see right here, just a sec. Uh, Cardinal, that's the one. Uh... So, he summoned us. That'll be interesting. Let's see here. The prince or the cardinal? Those two seem to be at odds at the moment. Uh, the guard did tell me to go there, but I'm going to be a douche and go to the prince first. <laughs> Trig, the prince of Jarana. You didn't look so worn out last time I saw you. What a guy aggravates you, your highness. Uh, what aggravates you so, your highness? We're off to a good start, guys. The beginning of the reaping are the incessant ringing. Who are you? I've been told that a certain scribe has arrived in town. Is it you? A healer and a wandering sorcerer with a license. Hopper Rowley. Your face looks familiar. Might we have met? We met in your palace, your highness. About three years ago. I'd just gotten my scribe's license. I spent a whole year through your archives. Uh, going through your archives. I can't remember every single palace scribe. Now if you were a good swordsman, we could talk. I see that you do have a sword and a staff. Isn't that a bit much? And what brings you to Albius? The staff is for walking, the sword for defending. As such are the times we live in. You either carry a sword or someone carries your head. As to why, I got word that the reaping has almost conquered Albius. That is why I'm here, your highness. Where else would a healer be during such difficult times? Curiosity got the best of me, so I came here. Uh, yeah, where else would a healer be at such difficult times? I don't care. As long as I don't freeze my ass off. Just tell me, scribe, healer, whatever. Why in Terminum are you in Albius? I am telling you, your highness. It's not a matter of my absent-mindedness, just pure curiosity. It's really a great feeling, seeing everyone, everything for yourself, and then writing it all down. <laughs> Aren't you afraid of getting entangled in the chaos? Don't you see what's happening in town now? You can't be that foolish. You are a scribe, after all. Why didn't you just run away and not look back? I would be ashamed of myself for shying away from such misfortune. I am a healer, after all, even capable of some magic, and magic definitely played a role in this. Perhaps I can be of assistance. I don't believe in do-gooders. Mages are powerless against the reaping. As for temple healers, I've got those in spades. Not much help, though. Besides, nobody cares about some ancient scrolls with all the madness going on. You're not quite sane, scribe. Everyone behaves oddly when the reaping begins, your highness. If you burn a tree's trunk, you'll hurt the branches too. It takes time for the ancient scrolls to earn respect, and for the scribe hard work to make people wise. Uh. Hmm. If you're as clever as scribes pretend to be, tell me. Was the bell ringing during the last reaping? And if it was, how did they stop it? Is there a clue in your scrolls about how to silence the bell? It did ring, but differently. And not for days, at least. I mean, how do you even keep this up? Anyway, stopping the bell is child's play. Just get the bell ringer off the damn thing. Do you have any idea how many men I lost in the town hall? I don't need a scribbler. I need soldiers. So much for your usefulness. Go visit the cardinal and see if, I can find a, if he can find a job for you. Well, he's not a douche at all. He seems like... Just the kind of man you would like to bend the knee to. Right. Let's see what the Cardinal has to say. The Cardinal, it appears, usurped Cherlon's shop, or Rask's shop, to use his most recent name. Though this Cardinal takes anything he desires, and the bell is really ear-splitting. So here you are, Blands, and here I was, thinking not a single fly would come to this pile of dung. We have two flies now, including you. And once again, your cardinal, Coronzon? Your... no. 
So you're a vagabond again. They told me you call yourself Hopper. I like Blance better. I've always been amazed by your passion for changing names. Only Ama has always stayed Ama. Your coming here is no coincidence, is it? What else did she predict? Mm, I don't know, I haven't seen her in agents. Nothing really, only the onset of the reaping. Yeah. Does that mean she hasn't lost her clairvoyance? That's how it pans out. The reaping has also started in Phrygia, not just here. That's not your doing, is it, Koranzon? Of course not. You don't think that we've sided with the Umbra, do you? We're all Umbra. Ama is, and so is Rask. He got away from what I've heard. Who came to Albius? Are you saying you don't know, Blance? I'm surprised. You should have seen the one responsible for all this. Something hides these events from my sight, but I caught a glimpse. There are two mortals, it seems. One here, one in the north. They resisted the Reapers, an unprecedented feat. The one in the north, if I am not mistaken, even managed to excarnate him. Excarnate? What the hell is excarnate? Probably kill. Huh? That can't be true. Are you certain? Surely it was only disembodiment. He couldn't have killed him. You'd also feel it if Umbra were killed. Disembodiment only. The Reapers already attacked him twice, but not in full force for some reason. I couldn't tell exactly, but he lost his body again. Damn it! This is a grave danger for all of us. Surprisingly, you've arrived just in time, Blance. Can I count on you? <laughs> is there anything you can't do without my help? Will you offer help in return? Shouldn't we be helping each other? Stop dawdling about, tell me what you need. But will you offer help in return? Saving someone again, huh? I'd add, rather uh, you ask me to kill someone for a change. It's much easier. Mm. There are enough murderers at large as is, although you're one of them. Still, doesn't the thought of saving someone please you even a little? All right, I hear you. I'm afraid I don't share your idea of fun. I hope you'll allow me to make a decision about any requests that we make. If so, then we have a deal. Hmm. Tell me what you need. It's not that simple. A merchant named Polygang supposedly saw a woman of profound beauty before the reaping, but no one else did. Then he saw the retired captain of the Odalon Guard, Foreign Brennan, with his daughter. They were talking to a reaper. Why should I care about a merchant's visions? Although Captain Foran did pique my curiosity. Looks like he's the man I need. Why would a reaper converse with mortals? I wonder. I don't know. Foran's wife died first. He took his daughter and a couple of soldiers and scurried away. However, one of the soldiers turned out to be Prince Trieg's son. And that numbskull of a prince convinced himself that his son could only be saved by the scribe who stops the ringing of the town hall bell. <laughs> Does the young prince need saving? The sworn no. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Gee, I wonder if the prince is the blonde dagger flinging dude. <laughs> Does the young prince need saving? Foreign is sentenced to death. A reaper left his mark on the town gate, and our dear Cherlon broke it down when he escaped. The Albius guards were clearly a bit traumatized. Then Thorn goes and hacks them all to pieces. Trigg's worried about his son and wants blood. Hmm, I don't care for the prince, but I'd like to find Forn and have a talk with him. Although I don't care for his possible execution either, and Prince Trigg will not take me seriously as a scribe anymore, so I can't promise I'll be any help. Hmm. Yeah, that doesn't really matter. Where could Forn be headed? Thorn will go from men here to men here until he realizes the reaping has corrupted them all. He's already visited the first one nearby. Even fought some Enses there. I don't know where he's headed next. The next men here can be found on the outskirts of Ursus. Enses are dangerous foes. Thorn's able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, 
He didn't earn a rank, uh, captain's rank for nothing. Let's hope he's still alive. Be accompanied by such a commander will keep the prince much safer, too. Hmm. You still haven't explained to me what you need. I want you to stop the ringing. It's not just Albius that's been affected by this magic. The bells ring all throughout Burkana now. All by themselves. Not a bell ringer in sight. All because of this one here. The Reaper didn't appear anywhere else but here. <sighs> Why should I care, Karanzon? I'm not unraveling someone else's enchantments. I need this body and I've got enough problems as it is. I'll do without your help. Maybe you should get to the top of the town hall tower by yourself. I couldn't unweave this mysterious spell. Among the Umbra, you have the best affinity for magic. Give me some advice at least. Several people already perished in that cursed town hall. The bell's magic saps the mortal's will and forces them to climb upwards. But we're different. Very well, Coranzon. But I'll only take a look. The moment I sense any danger, I'm turning around and getting out of there. Uh, town hall. Hmm. Just gonna check this out for a second. Wondering what a sorcerer might be doing, Albus, you enter its maze of streets. You follow the fleeting trace of magic, which leads to a side alley where someone else cast a spell several days ago. It, it's clear that it was no sorcerer. Somebody used the magical plaques. It makes sense. They would be imbued with power during the reaping. The pavement is smeared with blood. It looked like some hand-to-hand -hand combat took place too. A squeaking door makes you turn around. Several gloomy looking hulking figures exiting one of the house stop when they see you. Large sacks on their backs tell that either one of them is moving out or they're common marauders. It seems like it's the latter. The fucks throw the sacks to the ground and draw their weapons. Yeah, shit. <laughs> Yay, XP! I guess. Oh, shit. Yeah, I guess I'll have to do it then. Mm. That's how far you can move. And I'm just gonna move you back one. And then we wait. There he goes. I'm uh, just gonna wait a little bit longer. Because if I kill him now, these guys will come for me, I think. Yeah, see? Not falling for it. Now this guy, on the other hand, him I can go get. Deal 16 damage. Hmm. There you go. No actions for you. Not really, anyway. But it's good for him to get surrounded, I believe. Yeah, that's fine. Now, these guys move like zombies, though. How much does that cost? Five energy. Ooh, I could finish off these guys all at the same time. Well, these two at least. That's fine by me. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, that was cool. <laughs> That's fine. You're screwed, buddy. I'm gonna do this first, so no special moves for you. Good hit. And goodbye. You look at the corpses, and frustration washes over you. So many soldiers were dispatched to the city, but they only protect the prince and cardinals. Mere blocks from the town hall, a daylight robbery took place. The robbers won't hurt anyone anymore, though. 
Well, that was easy enough. This dude is seriously strong. Okay. On your way to the town hall, you're joined by Corazon. Corazon, whatever. You examine the staircase and can see that it's enchanted. Luckily, the spells doesn't affect Umbra. As you try to make sense of the intricate spellcraft, Corazon creeps up from behind and pushes you forward. You rush up the stairs against your will. This sorcerer is affecting you too, even though it shouldn't. You must turn back, but you can't. Your feet are not your own. That douche. On the upper platform of the bell tower, you find the soldiers who got too close to the enchanted stairs. Their eyes are vacant. You draw your swords. The guards might not attack you of their own free will, but that's no reason to get yourself killed. Well, I think this fight will be a little bit more challenging. Okay, let's do this. Ah, damage does not carry over. That is good, 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 good. Uh, 28, 40, 28. They've got archers, though. I'm going to wait here for a bit. Well, that. Wait some more. That's okay. One more. Hopefully this guy will come here or there. Uh, that's a little that bit less good. <laughs> a little longer still. Won't be able to take all of them out, but at least two of them. And if this guy comes straight forward. Alright, move up here. It's a bit of a risk, this, but yeah. Love that skill. Love it. Ah, shit. Here he goes. That's fine. Goodbye. Ouch. Hmm. Wait, I thought you said I could only do this. I could outright just kill him. You know what? I'm gone. Yeah, you're not gonna make it, bro. I'm gonna weaken his attack score. And now you're screwed. Alright, we win this one as well. Berserker. Okay, cool. The bell keeps ringing. The rope swings on its own, under the spell's effect. Simply grabbing it should break the spell, and you'll be free to leave. But it's a trick. Touching the rope triggers a curse. Trusting Koronzon was a mistake, and you're about to suffer the consequences. You gather your courage and grab the rope, losing your footing as the bell tower crumbles. Everything goes black, all but the message burned into your mind. Follow the guiding one, collect the seven parts of wisdom, read and be saved. That wasn't so bad. You wake up to somebody slapping your face, then hauling you upright. You fight to open your eyes. The first thing you see is your blackened and frozen hand, which has absorbed the full power of the curse. One look back is enough to confirm your suspicions. The town hall's bell tower has indeed been destroyed.
Ah, shnikes. Damn you, Coranzon. You scoundrel. I get you out of the rubble, and what do I get in return? Have you gotten mute or something? The town hall tower is no more. You've brought it all down somehow. The store is still in one piece, though, and the ring has stopped. That kind of magic is out of my league, Coranzon. I can only tell you that it definitely kept something horrifying at bay. It still does, but now with my help. But, hmm? but now with my help. See my hand? This unknown sorcerer must have had both hands blackened. Or could it be a sorcerer's? No matter. It being capable of such spell work can assume any form. The spell hasn't broken, and that's no ordinary curse on your hand. The bell must have been a decoy then. But I don't understand the enchantment's purpose. How should I know? If not for the bell ringing, the people of Albius might have slaughtered each other. Damn nation, it's your fault that I got caught in this enchantment. Along with the gods know who else. What if this blackness reaches my heart? It hasn't happened yet. Enough with the weeping. A pompous nobleman is headed your way. You met my request, so I owe you one. However, if you want to ensure my goodwill, I'd suggest you find Thorn and bring him to Opacum. Okay. I want to have a look at him. Oh, here comes Prince Trig. Oh, I'm looking forward to that one. The dream has come true, scribe. The hag was right. You stopped the bell ringing. Well, I invite you to serve the Jaranon crown from now on. Find my son, Ho, and the captain who led him away. Name of Form Brennan. Save the boy and bring the captain to trial. Excuse my insolence, your highness. I just want to get it straight. First, I hear about a girl of profound beauty. Now there's talk of some hag. And what, what's with the dream? Does it have anything to do with your orders? I dreamt of a terrifying hag who foretold your arrival. She tried to soothe me, said you'd help me. Don't grind your teeth, Koranzon. Respect the Geronon crown. You demand respect for the crown, but you show none for the temple. All these dreams and prophecies are pure heresy. And oh, forget about Thorn, he's not your subject. So it's not up to you to bring him to justice. It might surprise you, monk, but I'm perfectly capable of making decisions without your g precious guidance. Is it too much to say that annoying temple advisors below belong on the rack? <laughs> okay. Um, this dude just screwed me over, but this dude's an asshole, but he's also a prince. Uh... Ah, the temple serves only Berkana, fuck it. I'd like to believe that, especially with war approaching the southern kingdoms. I'll say it once more, Karanzan, if anything happens to Ho, Forn loses his head. I will pray that your son gets out of this unscathed. Yet I don't think it's wise to exact vengeance on the person trying to rescue him. The gods aren't that reliable. I'd be happy to do your bidding, your highness. You showed kindness to me once, and it's time I returned the favor. Finally, a voice of reason. And I don't care if it comes from a bookworm. Thank you, Koronzon, for your prayers, and you, scribe, will have others to assist you. Curse power, 20%. Well, that can't be good. Okay, guys, I think uh, before we uh, move on, I think this is where I'm going to cut out. It's not that long of a video, but we've already had two fights and a whole lot of information to process. Uh, plus, uh, I, I can't really edit this, so I have to put the full file online. Otherwise, I get that weird stuff on the top uh, that only part of the image is there. So, again, this is where I'm going to cut out. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I like where the story is going. Uh, not that big of a fan of getting cursed, <laughs> but, you know, that's how the story goes. And if you did like this, drop a like, or if you didn't, a dislike. And as always, if you like what I do, please subscribe. See you on the next one, guys. Bye.